Zach with Quantum Land Design again. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to capture a, a topo on an over-excavation. Uh, over-excavations are a common change order on construction sites for earth-moving contractors, and we want to make sure that you can capture the data, the data right so you can be paid correctly. Uh, if you've never done a topo survey before, uh, step over and check out our How to Topo, uh, how to topo video. Uh, it goes through topos in a little bit more detail and, and helps explain some of the concepts that, that you'll see here. We'll walk through uh, pre- and post-excavation topos. Uh, we'll take a look at stepped excavations, or, or a little bit different, more detailed. Uh, quickly, we'll look at odd-shaped excavations and how to, uh, how to topo them to make sure you get your volume calcs right. Uh, we'll look at a road over X quick, and then we'll walk through just a, a couple quick things on data formats to make sure you export the data in a format that either you can use in your takeoff software or your, uh, your data company can use. Here's our hotel site again. We found some issues with the subgrade in the area outlined in red. Uh, the engineers asked us to over excavate the area, but before we start, we'd like to get a topo survey of that area to make sure we can run volume calcs when we get done and determine how much extra material we've moved uh, so we're paid properly on the change order. Let's take a look at our pre-excavation topo first. Uh, first, we'll want to start out and date a new point file on our controller so we know that it's the pre-excavation topo and when we did it. And here's the general outline of the back of curb where the excavation area is. Now, the engineers asked us to go a couple feet outside the back of the curb to make sure we get enough done. And that means we'll want to step outside of that little ways and topo at least out to this gray box to make sure we have enough data to tie back into the existing for our volume calculations later. So we'll start with our first point up here, and then we'll go ahead and take topo shots on down that line. About every 10 feet or so is enough to, uh, to, get, to get the lay of the land in this situation. And then we'll continue along and do this across the over excavation. And when we get done, we'll have points you know, roughly in a grid format that will capture the, uh, the surface before we start excavation. Now we've done the excavation. You can see the excavated area is outlined here in red. And uh, we'll take a look at what we need to do to, to properly topo this and make sure we have the data we need. Uh, again, we'll want to start with a new point file and uh, put today's date on it so that you know that it is the post-excavation topo and it doesn't get confused with other work you might have done on the site. So we'll start here in the bottom of the over-excavation and we'll take our first point here on the corner. Notice that's down at the bottom of the excavation and then we'll just continue around the bottom of the excavation and take topo points as we go. Now once we're done, again, we'll have points in a grid clear around the bottom of the topo. Um, if, if the bottom of the excavation is laser level flat, uh, you probably won't need quite as many points as I show here, but make sure you capture enough to get any ups and downs in the bottom of the excavation. You want to get the volumes right so you get paid right. Now we'll step to the top edge of the excavation. You can see up here and we'll take our first topo point up here and then we'll continue around the top and finish out that entire area. That will capture the top of the excavation so we know the area that's excavated and how deep it was. Uh, once that's complete, we'll step back a little bit, grab another row of points around the outside, and that will capture the, uh, the post-excavated site. So now we've captured the pre-topo, the pre-excavation site, the post-excavation of the site. Uh, that data can then be made into two different 3D models that can be compared for volume calculations uh, for, for your payout. Now let's take a look at a stepped over excavation. Uh, I had some foundation issues here. Uh, the engineers authorized us to go ahead and over excavate this. Uh, it's deep enough we have to step back the excavation. So before we start, we're going to go ahead and do a pre-excavation topo again. We'll date this file. We'll make sure we go outside the excavation area and get plenty of data over that area before we start. Here's our stepped out excavation. So you can see there are a couple steps here that go down to the bottom and up. Now let's walk through and see what data we need to capture with our GPS rover to, uh, to make a good 3D model of this. Uh, we'll start out here on the outside edge on existing. See that represented here in the cross section. We'll take another point at the top edge of the excavation. We'll step down. We'll get another point in our first step. We'll take a point at the edge of the first step so we can model in that entire area. We need another one at the bottom, across the bottom, up. We'll go over here, back up to the top on the existing ground and we'll get one more to make sure we can tie back into existing. Now, that's really all the data you need to, to represent that area in 3D, and then we'll go ahead and step around the outside of the excavation and take points as often as necessary to catch any grade changes, uh, you know, ups or downs, uh, you know, vertically or horizontally. 
Now here's an odd shaped excavation. I, not too much I need to share here. I, I think you get the gist of it, but I just want to make sure that you understand to get enough points as you go around curves like this to, to represent that curve back in CAD. Because once this data is in CAD or your takeoff software, all you have are those points to tie these areas together. Now we'll take a look at our road over excavation. Uh, we'll use the cross-section method for this uh, for this topo. If you're not familiar with that, uh, take a look at our how to topo video. It goes into the cross-section method in depth and will help you uh, help you understand what we're doing here. Uh, we'll just take a look at one cross-section today. So to capture uh, to capture the existing topo data before we excavate, uh, we'll need to start a new point file and we'll need to capture the data along the dashed line here represents the existing conditions. So we'll start with our first point over here in the ditch, well outside of the area that we'll excavate, and then we'll catch points at every grade break as necessary along there to draw in this cross section. Once that's complete, we'll make another new point file, uh, we'll put the new date on it, and we'll capture a topo on our, uh, on our over excavated area. So we'll start out here at the edge of the topo so we have a good time to existing the area we did not excavate. We'll capture another one here at the top of the over excavation, then down at the bottom to get our depth and then on across. Now, if you've cut the crown into the over-excavation, uh, you'll want to shoot another point in the center here to, uh, to capture that, but in this case, that's not necessary. We'll get another point here at the top, another one over here to tie back into the existing, and that's all the data we need on this cross-section to, uh, to develop a 3D model and, uh, and do the volume calcs on it. Now let's talk about data export just a little bit. So your uh, your GPS system could have some type of proprietary file format that you can export. Uh, this should be compatible with whatever takeoff software you, you use, and, and most any modeling company should be able to handle that. Uh, if you're looking for more of a universal format that you know will work in any software, uh, a text or a CSV file type is, is universal. And the absolute critical things you need to make sure you export are the point number, which is here, the northing, the easting, the elevation, and it's very important to get the point descriptions too. Uh, those tell the people back in the office where that point was taken and, and what it means on the on the job site. Uh, you may see the term uh, ASCII uh, listed in your controller as an export option. Uh, that's kind of an industry standard and, and more or less it's that point number northing easting elevation. That wraps it up. Uh, we took a look at a pre and post excavation topos. Uh, the thing to remember there is to, uh, to date your files and make sure you use point descriptions so people back in the office can understand what you did in the field. Uh, we looked at stepped ex excavations, the detail you need to capture there to build a 3D model. Uh, and on odd shaped excavations, you just need to make sure you capture enough points to represent any, any uh, curves vertically or horizontally uh, back in the office. Uh, we looked at the, using the cross section method for a road ever excavation and we talked a little bit about data formats. All right, thanks for your time today. Uh, that's our over excavation topo, uh, part of our contractor series. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, 3D grading on Instagram, or just drop me an email. I I'd be happy to hear from you and answer any questions you might have.